Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about different types of functions and the importance of this is going to be that the easier you can visualize these functions, the easier it will be for you to apply the actual calculus portion of this course onto them. So it's very important for us to close these this pre-calculus gaps, how these functions look, because the actual calculus part may not exactly be difficult, but without your knowledge of these functions, how they look like, it may be a little tough on you. All right, so let's get started. So here we will refer to this set of functions, our six main functions, as our library of functions. So we're going to write that in there, library of functions, which is going to start off with the linear function, the line, which we have seen, which is going to look like that. It's going to be a simple y go to x line, right? Maybe a little straighter, but can't draw too straight. And the most important part of this is for you to notice the features of the line. It's a straight line, constant slope, just bam, right? So this line can also be drawn in different ways, which I'm going to do in the color red, just like down here. And then it can also be like up here, or it can like come across like this, or it can like just be like, like that. It's going to look a little different, you see? All these variations in red are still a line. It's just a straight, constant slope, straight, constant line that you're going to have doesn't matter if it's a positive line or a negative line, it's just a line. That's what I want you guys to know for now. Later we'll get a little more tricky. So the next function we're going to talk about is going to be the parabola, which is probably the second most common function you're going to be dealing with. So the parabola, which we're going to start off drawing it in blue, in the most basic form of y equals x squared, is going to be looking like this, right? It's going to like both legs of the parabola, both ends of the parabola are going to open up the same way, right? So in this case, both legs open up, right? However, we can also draw another variation of the parabola where the both legs open down or it legs open up, but it's like over here, a little fatter, a little skinnier. Doesn't matter. It is still a parabola, right? Something like this. That is all still a parabola. So the idea is that both legs open the same way, and it kind of looks like a U shape, U kind of thing. That is the parabola we talked to. The blue, though, matches the equation that we have here. The blue is a y equals x squared. So when I say y equals x squared, think about the blue. The rest, we'll deal with later. Don't worry for it right now. So like we said, the parabola opens both its legs the same way, but what do you call it when it doesn't open the same way, right? So for example, when the right leg moves up and the left leg goes down, right? Which something like like this, right? Which we're going to have right leg going up, left leg going down. We're going to call our cubic function, right? It's going to look just like that. And just like the parabola, the cubic function also has variations to it. It can look like this or it can just open in different ways. It can it can open like over here or like down here, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's a cubic function because its legs go opposite ways. So whenever legs go opposite ways, we think about a cubic function. And that we recognize with the power of x to the 3 compared to the parabola, which is the powers of x to the 2. So anything x to the 2 is going to be a parabola. Anything x to the 3 is going to be a cubic function. So the fourth function we're going to talk about it's going to be the absolute value. Once again, we're going to start off drawing it in blue. Right? And it's always going to be in a V shape. A V shape is going to be our absolute value, which is different from our parabola because our absolute value is just a V, while our parabola is more like a U. You know? So that is a difference. The straight lines, a set of straight lines give you an absolute value, but curved lines will give you a parabola. So also, we're going to draw some variations of of your uh, of your parabola. I mean, of your absolute value function. We can make it upside down. <coughs> Excuse me. We can um, do this. We can just make it like really fat. Whatever we're going to do is just it's still an absolute value function. Just uh, some variations of it, right? So right under the parabola, we're going to draw the square.
square root function, right? So we're going to start off in blue again. The square root function is going to be written like this. And the reason why I put a 2 here, although we know that most square roots never carry a 2, scroll down a little bit there. So most square roots never carry a 2, and I'm going to put a 2 there because whenever most square roots are always going to look like this, but it's the importance of the 2 is that it's an even number, right? So most even numbers are going to carry the same shape compared to odd numbers. And the same thing is going to happen between parabolas and cubic functions. But here we have the square root, which looks like this. And then we're going to, again, draw some variations of it. So down here, up here, right? We're just going to draw like, like that. Different ways. It is still a little like a line, a little curved line that starts somewhere and ends to the right of it or ends to the left of it if we draw like this doesn't matter. point is that the square root function starts somewhere and it curves to somewhere else compared to our cubic function, right? Our cubic function, which we're going to start drawing it in blue again, doesn't really start anywhere and doesn't really end anywhere. All right? So it has no start and it has no end compared to the square root function, which has a start, but it has no end, right? So then again, we draw some variations of this like this. Uh, it's going to get crazy to draw this in a second. My mind isn't really working out right here to draw it backwards. Let's give that another shot. You guys are probably better than me at this. Give myself a middle point like that. However you put it, it's going to be like a sleeping, like a sleeping cubic function. So if you guys make the relation between the cubic function being like this, right? And then the, the, the cubic root just being like a sleeping version of it. We just move this blue thing over. Um, you get the cubic root. You guys may be able to remember that cubes and cube roots, they look kind of the same. One is just a sleeping version of the other. And we'll go later into the terms of why exactly is that. But for right now, just know that much. So now we're going to be able to do some examples. So we're going to do an example one where it tells you to determine what parent function each graph belongs with. So when I ever say a parent function, I mean that you're going to have these as your y equals to x squared, y cubed, or y equals to the value of x. Those are your parent functions in this, this blue method that I've given to you. This, this blue circles right here, right here, and right here. Those are your parent functions that I like referring to. So here I'm going to match these graphs, right, with the parent function. So I'm given the first one, right, option A. So what function would you say this, 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 this function error here matches with? So we look at it, right? So it has the shape of a V, right? So normally the common, the common uh, trouble will be between this with uh, between this V shape, which is an absolute value, or the parabola. But the key factor between the absolute value and the parabola is the shape. Right? The parabola is a little round. The, the absolute value is straight lines. So, so we have some straight lines here, right? Then what we say is the parent function is y equal to absolute value of x. All we care about is the parent function, right? We don't care the absolute value of x normally opens up and here's opening down. We don't care about that. We just care about the parent function. So now we look over here at, at a, a letter B and we ask ourselves, man, what function is this, right? So, it looks a little curvy, right? So all these curvy stuff can be anything. It can be a square root, it can be a cubic root, it can be the, 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 cube, uh, the cubic function, the cubic root, the square root, it can be anything. So if, like, the one thing I like to look at here is the legs. How are the legs opening? Are they opening the same way or are they opening the opposite way? Hmm, we look at this, this function, this, this leg is going down, this leg is going up, they're all passing different ways. So that leaves us with the cubic function up here, which they open a different way, or the cubic function, right? So in, in the, the, the cubic function, one goes up and one goes down, while in the cube root function, the root function, one goes left and one goes right, right? So that's a difference that we can observe over here. This, this leg over here, you see how here it goes up 
and then here it goes down, while in the cubic function, one goes right and one goes left. You guys see that? So, since these legs are obviously going up and down, this is going to be a cubic function, not a cube root function, and we're going to match it up with the pair of y equals x squared. Now we look at letter C. So we start off with the same thing. What's going on here? Is it, are the legs going the same way or are they going opposite way? So we look over here and these legs are going the same way, right? So since they're going the same way, we look over here and obviously the easier fit is going to be the parabola because the square root function doesn't open on both sides. It just opens on one side only. So that's the, big, the biggest difference between the parabola and the square root function. So therefore we say that it's parent function is going to be y equals x squared because the legs open the same way and you have two sides compared to the square root function which actually only has one side. Alright, so thank you very much guys and see you next time.